can anybody get into the sort of ant hobby, the ant keeping hobby, etc, etc? Well, as it turns out, yes. So many, many months ago, I went down to Stratford Butterfly Farm. It's an absolutely amazing place. If you get a chance to go there, go there, because it's fascinating. And they've got a massive, they've got a bit of a reptile corner, and they've just got this massive room that's got a few like scorpions in the wall, in, in wall enclosures. It's just beautiful, it's fascinating. But in that room, the main feature is a giant ant cutter ant colony. They've got one little desk over in the corner, well, huge sort of glass container in one corner. That's where the colony is. You can see all the little tunnels and the burrows all throughout the glass. It's just absolutely fascinating to see. You can see where the queen is, where her eggs are, and just everything all around there. It's beautiful. But then coming out of that colony is a big piece of, I call it shipping rope. It's rope that's about that thick. And it goes up into the ceiling, loops around all over the ceiling, everywhere. And then it tees off into two different directions. One's got a moisture source. One's got like a, just a glass container full of bramble bushes. And that's it, you can see them walking across all the, the leaves, the, all, you, can, you can see them walking across all the rope into the leaf area, they chew up a bit of leaf, carry it back on the, and it's just fascinating to watch. Since then, I've been fascinated with ants. So, I needed to find out, is this a hobby that I can get into easily? Have I got the support that I need? Being a total newbie to it, I know absolutely nothing. Being a total newbie, how hard will it be? You all know me on this channel, we like to go above and beyond for all of our animals and go absolutely massive. So we're gonna see this and just see what happens. So I got reached by a company called Ants HQ. You find him on Instagram, that's where he found me, that's where I found him, and we just go back and forth. I asked him various questions. He said, I'm gonna send you a 50 pound box, as full starter kit, you don't need anything else. Everything you need is gonna be in there. We're gonna send in a complete care sheet, every, all the information you need there, but if you do have any other questions, contact me. We can go from there. Here we go, it's arrived. Obviously I have unboxed it, just because I had it delivered to a different address, so I had to collect it from there, bring it back to the studio, etc., etc. In here is apparently a 50 pounds starter kit for ants. We'll have a look. Now I turned around to him and said, Leaf cutters are a bit beyond me at the minute because me, I would have a massive colony and all the rope and everything, it'd be fascinating. What species do you recommend? One, I'm a total newbie, so it's gotta be a hardy species. Two, it's gotta be quite enjoyable to watch. I wanna see all the tunnels, the burrows, I wanna see the workers doing all the work, I just wanna see everything, I want a good feeding response, I wanna be able to see a feeding response. If I'm gonna be putting it out on camera for you guys, I wanna have something like that. And then on top of that, I want them to look good as well. I want my son to be totally entranced by this. So he has come back with a species, which I think you might love. But we're gonna get into the box. It's well packed, as you can tell. Now I have, like I say, unboxed it. And the only thing I've unboxed at the minute, got some bubble wrap, is the actual ants themselves. I wanted just to check they were all okay. That's the box. Yep. That's the box. If you want to check out their website, they have a full website. Um, I'll link it in the description below and on the first comment. I found them on Instagram. It's Ants, well, you can see it. You can see it just there. Ants HQ. Now, comes in this little tiny box, which we're gonna unbox. First thing you see right off the bat, piece of bubble wrap and a full care sheet. Now, when I say a full care sheet, I mean a full care sheet, because We've got two care sheets. So let's have a quick glance. We have got European giant red ant care sheets. Everything you need is just there. I don't know how well you can see it. We've got a piece of red, we've got a pipette, a piece of red plastic, the ants, some stuff there, a little box there. We've got this stuff. I don't know what that is. We've got a bit of food in there. We've just got loads of bits and pieces. So let's go through the box and find out exactly what we've got. Number one, this. It's just a, I think he called it a red acute cover. I think that's to go over the actual ant colony. We'll go through all of it when we actually go to set it up and stuff like that. But I think they like it dark and we like to see them so that just goes around the outside. This is escape oil, stops them from escaping. Pipette, just to sort of add a bit of moisture in there I suppose. We've got powder here, which I assume is part of the food. 
we have got the actual ants in there. We'll go through them in a second. This one here is like a flat pack box, a foraging box, I think they call it, a foraging area. So you can go on the end of the test tube and they, you can put the food and stuff in there. And this is the actual uh, colony itself. Let's go through each individual one for you guys. So we're going to open this one up first. Again, I'm a total novice. I've got all the information there that I potentially need. I'm going to open it up nice and gentle because these are fragile to vibration. There we go. That is the test tube. This side, I would assume, is water. It's plugged off there. We've got ants on there. Some over this side, some inside. We've got a big queen in there. It looks like we've got a load of eggs or larva in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got seven workers and a queen. Loads of little eggs and larva. So with the actual ants themselves, the little colony that I've got just here, I am hoping, fingers crossed, everything goes well. They set up really nicely. Over time, the colony juvenates and juvenates and just grows and grows and grows. And I can have a fascinating show display for you guys on the other end of the camera and for my son. He would absolutely find it fascinating. So would I. Apparently this colony that I've got just here uh, will house them quite comfortably for eight to 12 months. Then I've got to look at making them bigger. We'll see what the progress is of them nearer that time. They, the Ants HQ, the company that have sent this, they guarantee live arrivals. Yeah. I'll put that just there. Now I've been told don't put them in direct sunlight. I did turn around to him and say, what are the most common mistakes that new ant keepers make? Ant keepers that don't have any knowledge at all. The biggest mistakes he come back with was checking on the ants too much while they're a small colony. They can eat their brood if they get stressed out. And the brood is the term given to the eggs and the larvae from what I can, t from what I can tell. I'm still learning all the terms. Like I say, it's totally new to me. That was one of the big things. Too much vibration, they could eat their brood. Putting them in a, an enclosure that's too big straight away couldn't stress them out. It's not such a problem when there's a big colony because you can take the odd one or two quite easily. Don't put them in direct sunlight. That's another one. That's why they sent this red sheet that I can put over the tube. So I can still see through it, but they can't see out of it, apparently. Feeding them too much and too often, that could be bad for them. He's told me for a colony of this size, three to five uh, fruit flies every four to six days I think it was I'll have to double check that but again I've got a full care sheet just there which I can go through and have a good bit of looking at inside this one oh hello we have got oh so this I assume is the nest they've got this little pipette thing sticking up just here there you go so I, I imagine you take that off and that's where you humidify it. So you drop a few droplets of water in there. He said every seven days, just a few drops of water in there. The ants will eat or drink the humidity, the humidity droplets. We've got, so that's blocked solid of a substrate of some kind. This is all the nest. So this just here is a little blockage with a tube going through it. This one here is a little blockage with another tube going through it. This one here is another blockage with a tube going through it. That I assume is the nest which is absolutely fascinating and really looks like it's put together and set up ready for me. So I don't really have to do anything there. So when they say that you shouldn't really put them in a big enclosure straight away, that is the test tube that they came in, as in packaging purposes, and that's the test tube that they're gonna live in, that's their nest. So it's not massively bigger than what they're actually in now. So I would assume that is absolutely perfect for them. Let's move on, we have got this little box here. Now it looks like it's a flat pack sort of box, so that's gonna need putting together. I would assume that is a foraging area to put on the end just there. So the ants would live in the nest over this side, the, the workers would work their way through into the foraging area, pick up the food, the moisture, bring it back to the nest and stuff like that. This species of ants, the queen actually does go out and hunt. So that just makes it a bit handy. And we get to see a nice big juicy queen going out and hunting on camera every now and then. Let's read the instructions. So the very first sentence that we've got, we've got loads of paragraphs to go through here. The very first centimeter is an introduction. It's the actual species name, the scientific name. Menica rubida, 
It's from eastern regions of Europe, Poland, Croatia. Recommended that we put them in a warm area of the house, but not in direct sunlight. That's the very first paragraph. So, like I said, one of the beginner mistakes that I asked him is right there, the very first one, straight away, perfectly fine. I don't know exactly where I'm going to put these. Probably on this shelving unit just here, near my um, bracky palmer that's not a bracky palmer that's now a cow boob Albi Palos and curly hair tarantula. Yeah, there. They primarily eat honey water. Can be easily be it can easily be created by simply mixing honey and water in a one-to-one -one ratio. So 50% honey, 50% water, mix it up, sorted. A variety of insects, crickets and flies, mealworms. That's absolutely perfect because I breed my own mealworms. I've got my own fruit fly colony, perfect. So, so far, these are looking like a great additive to this reptile room. Now we go on to the scientific information. It's nice that they've added that. They've put the two main topics right on the very first line. Then we go down into the scientific information. Again, these come from Ants HQ. If I found them on Instagram. I would assume they're gonna be on Facebook and they've got a website which is linked down in the description below. So the queens get 12 to 13 millimeters, whereas the workers get four to 10 millimeters. Now I did ask him about this. I said, how long do they last? And he said the, the queens can last up to 15 years. That shocked me, you know, that really did shock me. I said, well, what happens when the queen does eventually pass away for whatever reason? And um, he said, in captivity, these do not, or are very rare at reproducing another queen. So that would be it. The colony would slowly start to die off. I said, well, can you not add another queen into the mix? Can you reintroduce another queen? And he said, yes, it is possible with this particular species. Sometimes it doesn't go to plan, sometimes it does, but it's definitely worth thinking about when it comes to that time, but that time is a long way away, so there's nothing to really worry about or think too much about right now. Bonus. I love the fact with Ants HQ that I can ask them any question, no matter how stupid it is, no matter how simple it may be, no matter how complex it is, they will give me the answer that I require perfectly every time. So if you are extremely new, if you are thinking about getting into the hobby, this is definitely a great company to go for. Let's keep reading. So the behavior of these exact ants, now I have been warned about this and I have, through the research that I've done, found this. Um, they are an active and aggressive species of ants. They, they active, actively go out, hunt, wolf, pounce on the prey. They, nothing to be messed with. They've got a rather nasty sting in, the, in their bum as well. Uh, apparently it's like a wasps thing. I don't know. That's just what I've, I've found out before this. Um, they can often be found in large numbers. The larger the numbers, the more aggressive they can get. Um, in the wild, colonies can be found in ranges of habitats from grasslands to mountainous regions, pavement slabs, urban parks. That'll do me. I, oh, that'd be quite nice because then eventually, when this colony has grown and I want to make something really nice and a real showcase, I can do like a nice big square box with like a mountainous ridge on one side. Oh, that'd be quite nice actually. But I'm thinking way too far in advance here. Uh, the species is polymorphic, meaning that workers naturally vary in size. The smaller workers tend to be associated as nurses. That's fancy, isn't it? Uh, which are primarily tasked at rearing the youngs from the depths of the nest. Ah, oh, that's cute. So this is one thing I find fascinating about them because they are a full family inside this whole colony. Everyone's got their own little role and they all do their own little piece. I absolutely find that massively fascinating. I generally do think these are a great asset to my reptile room. Food, we've got uh, crickets, mealworms, grasshoppers, flies, honey, sugar water, uh, diced boiled chicken strips. Wow, fair enough then. This is all within the first few paragraphs, so they've already got a ton of information. Normally, when I get a lot of information like this, it goes in one ear and out the other. So I'm going to have to keep reading this over and over again to make sure I can give these the best life that they can possibly have. But this is so far a great source of information. It's recommended that you feed the colony every six to seven days with a source of protein. That'll be any sort of live food, really. Freshly killed insects, mealworms, crickets. They can be purchased from your local pet shops. It's easier, convenient. Small boiled chicken strips if it's easier. I would assume the same with all the reptiles and animals that I've got, variety is key. Every single live food, every, single, every food that you decide to give them has got a different nutrient base with it. So give them a, a variety, they'll get all of it. Lastly, sugar water or honey water droplets can be given every week or so via the pipette. The pipette. Um, do, 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 do. This is a little treat for the ant workers. Um, which will use the sugar as energy source 
to go about their daily activities. Oh, here we go. Uh, temperature. Right, temperatures. 18 to 25 degrees Celsius. However, during the winter months of November to mid-February, temperatures should be kept 5 to 15 degrees. So I like the fact that here they're talking along the lines of a full year cycle of the animal. Because the, the reptile hobby hasn't caught up to that too much just yet. You still get a lot of people that won't brumate a bearded dragon and stuff like that because it's not the done thing in captivity. Whereas this is replicating their natural wild behaviors, which I absolutely love that. And it's promoted to do that through the paperwork that Anti HQ actually give you, which I love that. Right, let's keep reading. That ensures that the ants can have a dormancy and the queen can have a pause from laying eggs, therefore ensuring her well-being and enabling her to lay masses of eggs during the spring and summer. Wow. This is like a proper family. And I've just batted a fly. This is like a proper family. The queens, they can live to 10 to 15 years and the workers four to 18 months. Ah, oh, that's fascinating. So the workers will be constantly rejuvenating. Ah, right. Uh, within the starter pack, you will receive the nursery tube ant farm, which is that thing right there, guys, complete with the Ant HQ sticker. Uh, clear acrylic foraging area. Now that will be this thing just here, which I've got to build because it has come flat pack. There's a couple of O-rings and stuff in there, which is quite good. A pipette. Um, clear oil barrier solution, which is what I assume that stuff is. Uh, sand, I haven't got any sand. Oh, we've got the instructions on how to set it up. Let's go setting it up then. Uh, sorry, the sand isn't inside it, the sand's in the little bag. That's not food, that's actual sand. So, first off, we have to build that. And as I say, don't give me no hate, I am a complete newbie and I am here trying to figure out if it's easy for us to actually do this as a complete newbie. So we have to build this up first. So, so through the instructions, as always, read through every instruction possibly. We've only got six instructions here and then start. So apply the ant barrier, that's the oil stuff. Um, use a cotton wool buds or tissue paper. Uh, uniformly apply a smooth barrier to the top one to two centimeters of the foraging area lid. So the lid is basically, we've got a square piece just like that and we've got this as well. So it's gonna sit like that and the lid can actually come up and off and stuff like that. So I'm gonna to have to apply some barrier onto that. Um, decorate the foraging area, optional. Uh, you can use the sand provided, which obviously I've already shown. Uh, carefully put together the foraging area, firstly ensuring you remove all the plastic film. Is there a plastic film on it? Oh yeah, there is. Gently connect the nursery tube into the foraging area box. So we've got on one side of these tubes, we've got a big hole and we've also got a big rubber grommet. So when I put it together, it basically just connects in just like that. It's just nice and easy. It fits in perfectly. So I'll get that one done as well. Help me do that, because that normally is quite tight. It says I can use some of that oil barrier to help lubricate it to go in perfectly fine. Carefully pipette, pipette, uh, droplets of water. So I've got to take that little black rubber grommet off the top, pipette some water into there, into this plaster. I'll turn it around so you can see a bit better. Into that as plaster. Uh, let it fully absorb before adding more droplets in it. The humidity in there will help to feed all the ants and stuff. That's quite fancy. Now comes the fun bit. Ooh. Gently tip the tube containing the colony into the foraging area by removing the cotton plug. So we have got in this actual foraging area, in this area just here, we have got this here, there's a plug on the end. Gently tip the tube containing your ant colony into the foraging area by removing the cotton plug. Patience is key. The ants usually take 20 minutes to 24 hours to move into the nest. However, it can take longer sometimes. So that's, these have a quite a nasty sting from what I've done as research. So it's basically a case of take that plug off. Will it fit into that hole? Yep. Let them go, tip them gently into the foraging area. Then connect the foraging area to the end of the nest and it might take them 
up to 24 hours to move into the nest. Right, so we've got some setup to do now. Let's go. There we are. I'm gonna put some there as well. I'm gonna do the bottom of the lid as well, just because why not? I put the lid back on that, drop it over there, and now drop the back of the foraging lid on. I've gotta get the barrier that I've just used, oh, and do the top of that on the inside as well, and put it in. I've gotta get the grommet in the hole. I've added a bit of barrier to that, just to help with the lubrication. Boom, 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 boom. Get it twisted so the pipette thing sticks up. But that is what I've got. Wow chuffed with how that has turned out. That looks the dogs. So I've got my little lid there for the foraging area. They go, if this is the nest over this sort of area here. They're gonna come out through this one barrier, through this next barrier, through this barrier, into the foraging area to feed and grab stuff. They'll pick up loads of stuff, take it back into the nest, feed off all the young and stuff like that. That's just, I love that, that is super cool. It doesn't look like they can get out anywhere. I'm gonna get the lid open on there and I'm gonna pour the sand in first. I'm gonna give it a bit of a shake while I can, just to sort of get it down there, push it down a bit there and there, into all the corners nicely. So right, there we go, I've got the sand in there. I'm gonna clear the side there. And now I've got to pipette some water into there. Now for me, I've got a pipette full of basically room temperature water. That's all I've got in there. I don't want it to be too cold because if I am adding them in straight away, I don't want to do it too much, but just a couple of drops. So now just put the lid on, leave it for a bit just to let it all absorb up nicely. I seems to be that I've done everything perfect just so far. That looks, just absolutely amazing for an amazing little ant farm, doesn't it? For the starter setup anyway, because I mean, they're gonna live down this end in this little nest. They can walk through, do all the foraging through all this sort of area. That's where I'm gonna stick some food for them. It's just gonna be absolutely amazing, isn't it? So while I'm waiting for that little bat last bit to absorb, I've got the red acute paper, which I'm gonna, I've cut it down into size, as you can tell. And I'm gonna basically just cover that area. Apparently this is good for them to help them feel secure, that helps them settle in that little bit more. They come with two elastic bands, so what I'm gonna literally do is just wrap it around while I wanna keep the seam at the bottom, just so it's easier for me to sort of view them, really. I'm gonna double up the lucky band over it. Just, it's a dead thin elastic band as well, so it's quite handy to just sort of flick on there, so to speak. Let's release them into their new habitat. We've got the little lid just there which I'm gonna open. We have got the ants just here. I see some in there, some in the tube there. Now, the instructions said, release this knob off the side and basically just pour them in. I'm not massively comfortable on that. A catch cup, if needed, I'll put that back there. I've got forceps, again, if needed. And if I need to get in there, I've got a McDonald's stirrer. So I don't know how much of this you're gonna see, but, Let's just give it a go. These have got one hell of a nasty sting on them apparently. So look, there we go. We're getting the lid off. It's slowly coming off and right. So I'm wondering if I can simply just do that. I'll do it that way so that you can see. I would imagine some eggs have just dropped in there. Oh, here goes one. Right, actually, will they be able to get out? Oh, one's just gone in the hole. One's just gone all the way through. Did you see that happen? Queen's not out yet. Right, right, right. Right. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Boof! Done. Right, as you can tell, the actual material has gone in there. I'm going to wait for them to go up the hole and go in towards the nest area before I actually remove that. Just double check there's actually nothing left in the test tube. 
doesn't look like it. So I'm going to get the lid on there just in case anyway. And I'm going to try and get that sticker off and reuse that. But so far, there is the ants. And they're picking up stuff. They're picking up... The, oh, God, they've already picked up the eggs. It's just absolutely fascinating. But I've got to get these out of the direct sunlight. Get them into their new area. And just keep watching. That's the queen you can see right there. Right at the front. They're all going to be going absolutely mental. They've just had their home sort of destroyed, haven't they? So, oh, there goes the queen. I think the queen's just gone through and in. Oh, yeah, there's a few going through. You can see them just there. There's the queen. But hopefully they go through that barrier, through that barrier, into the nest and start building an actual nest. This is absolutely fascinating. So massive thanks to Ants HQ. They're in the links in this description. They're also on the top first comment that I'm going to pin. Massive thanks for sending me this. This is absolutely fascinating. I can't wait to show everybody the fascination behind this. I can't wait to learn more. If you have any hints or tips for me, leave them out in the description down below. And thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you've appreciated these because there's going to be a lot more videos coming.